We finally had oral arguments in Moore versus the United States. Hi, this is financial planner Sean Mullaney. Let's discuss. So I'm recording this video on December 5th, shortly after the conclusion of today's oral arguments in the Moore versus the United States tax case at the Supreme Court. Previously, I did an extensive video on the background and the history of this case, so I invite you to watch that video to get up to speed about the parties and what's going on in this particular case. What it involves is the 2017 Mandatory Repatriation Tax, which taxes U.S. shareholders of foreign companies for up to 31 years of previous foreign earnings. It's sort of an interesting tax, and it presses some very important constitutional questions about what is a valid income tax and what's not a valid income tax. And interestingly enough, a long-standing notion called realization uh, is at question here. It might be that the Supreme Court's going to come back and say, guess what? You don't need realization to have a valid income tax. And that would be a surprise to a number of folks, myself included, but anything's on the table. So I want to quickly go over what the oral arguments seem to be setting up in terms of sort of three camps of thinking among the Supreme Court justices. And one has to keep in mind, oral arguments are just one moment in time, and the justices are not bound by the questions they asked or what they seem to be thinking in oral arguments. They can go back to their chambers, totally change their minds. So we don't have any full guarantees, but I'll give you a few observations and a few free predictions about what might happen in Moore versus the United States. All right, so I think today we saw emerge, three, or heard emerge, because it's oral arguments and you only get to hear them, you don't get to see them. Um, what we heard emerge are three camps among the Supreme Court justices. The three Democrat-appointed justices seem to believe that realization is not a requirement to have a valid income tax. Now, to my mind, that would overturn a century uh, of precedent in American income tax. I think that would be a very negative development if that ultimately becomes the law of the land through a majority Supreme Court decision. So we have that one uh, camp. A second camp, which seems to be led by Justice Gorsuch, says, oh no, realization is a vitally important component of the American income tax system. And if you don't have realization, Congress is not authorized under the 16th Amendment to tax that particular gain, right? And then we have a third camp emerging, and this seems to be led by Justices uh, Barrett and Justice uh, Kavanaugh, where they're saying, well, there's some things sort of going on here in the middle that could sort of distinguish this particular tax. It's called the mandatory repatriation tax from a lot of other familiar taxes in American income tax. Subpart F, partnership taxation, they call that subchapter K, those sorts of things. And where I, I think this ultimately might be going is a decision for or against the Moors that's either going to be six to three or five to four. That would be my prediction today. After hearing oral arguments, understanding there's always a chance it's going to be nine nothing for something that I'm not thinking about. But if oral arguments are at all indicative, and we don't know that to be fully true, right? Because we don't, we're not in the heads of the justices. I would bet it's going to be a six three decision or a five four decision. Now, is that going to be four against the Moors? And there, I got to say, that's sort of a jump ball. That's a 50-50, in my opinion, where we are today, right? Let's think about those three camps, right? I think we're going to have the three liberal justices write an opinion. One of them will write an opinion that basically says, look, uh, realization is not required. The mandatory repatriation tax is a valid income tax. We're done here, okay? I think that's what they're going to write in their opinion. Then I think we're going to have an opinion that seems to be where Justice Gorsuch is mentally that says something to the effect of um, realization is a vitally important consideration and is a requirement if you're going to have an income tax that's valid under the 16th Amendment. And in this particular case, there is no um, a, you know, a, applicable realization event to the Moors, so the mandatory repatriation tax is entirely invalid, or at least invalid as applied to the Moors, right? So I think there's going to be something like three or four justices that sign on to that opinion. And then I think we're going to have two or three justices in the middle. And their opinion is going to say something to the effect of, well, realization matters. 
And then they're going to say that either this is a valid tax or this is not a valid tax. And I thought Justice Kavanaugh had some very interesting observations, which I basically agree with, which is this. This tax is hitting not one year's of earnings, right? That's what subpart F does every year. That's what uh, subchapter K for partnerships does every year. Subchapter S for S corporations. Every year it says, what's your income and expenses this year? We're going to throw that, which is a realization event. We're going to throw that to a shareholder, right? Um, And I think those have far fewer questions and concerns than the mandatory repatriation tax because the mandatory repatriation tax goes far away from the annual accounting concept, which I think is vital to American income tax. And it's saying, or this mandatory repatriation tax taxed up to 31 years of earnings all at once with almost no notice, right? It was at the end of 2017. They first started kicking around this legislation, I think in the fall of 2017. So there was almost no notice. It was passed in December of 2017. So it's in 2018, now you have a tax on 31 years worth of earnings. That's going to p- pass constitutional muster. I could see Justice Kavanaugh, Justice Barrett writing some sort of opinion that narrows in on that particular issue. They were referring to, to it as a due process issue, although there was discussion as to whether that's both 16th Amendment and due process. But either way, I think that's a real defect in the mandatory repatriation tax that could be the basis for overturning it, at least as applied to the Moors. And then you'd have a situation where you wouldn't have any controlling or any majority view out there on the realization question either way. Or you might have a majority opinion or maybe two opinions that sort of together are a majority that says realization matters. Or you might have uh, Justice Kavanaugh, Justice Barrett go with the liberal justices, and we'd have a situation where realization would now be sort of in limbo, because you'd have some Supreme Court justices saying it's required, some Supreme Court justices saying it's not required, and then you'd have sort of this middle saying, well, in this case, it was there, so we don't have to reach that question. So I think where we're at is that um, we're in the middle and look, it could be that there's going to be a 9 nothing decision here, but if I had to bet money on the proposition, I'm not giving you legal or gambling advice in this video, but if it was my dollar bill uh, in the middle of the table, the one thing I would bet on is 6-3 six, six to three or 5-4. to four. That's the two things I would, I would bet on. Everything else I think is up in the air, and I'm a little concerned what we're going to get is some sort of split decision that doesn't resolve the question for, you know, the next 50 years as to whether or not realization is in fact required for an income tax to be a valid income tax. What do you think about the Moore versus the United States case? What do you think about the constitutionality of the mandatory repatriation tax? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please mash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.